What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Panther and welcome to Battlefield versus Call of Duty. So today we're just going to be kind of discussing the differences between Battlefield and Call of Duty, kind of the rivalry that the two have and just kind of, you know, the small differences that they have and like the communities all around them. So let's get right into this. So as we all know, Infinite Warfare and Battlefield 1 have recently come out and the two games are very, very different. Now, Let's, let's kind of go through some things and just explain the differences. So Call of Duty Infinite Warfare over here, Battlefield 1 over here. Obviously, Infinite Warfare is set way far in the future. It's got a whole bunch of futuristic guns, and it's got an advanced 3D movement system. And it's just kind of, you know, a little bit, a little bit chaotic. There are, like, game-changing things in supply drops. Now, Battlefield 1, on the other hand, is set back in World Wars, so we know exactly what's going on. We've read about it in history textbooks and all that, so we kind of have a feeling for what's going on. It's got guns that we've, that we've seen, that we've grown up with, you know, things that we've read about. It also has no advanced movement system. It has a whole lot more to offer, and in the battle packs, there are no real game-changing things. It's all cosmetics. <gasps> wow, get that, Call of Duty. So obviously, Infinite Warfare has not been very well received by the community, even the Call of Duty community. In the gaming community, Infinite Warfare is pretty much just a joke at this point, while Battlefield 1 is being praised. And now, obviously on YouTube, the Infinite Warfare trailer has many, many, many dislikes. While Battlefield 1, on the other hand, released just a couple days later, is being praised Hallelujah, sing Jesus, and it has so many more likes, and people are still saying rip cod in the comments section of Battlefield 1. Now, I think this kind of contributes a little bit to Battlefield 1's success. I think the timing was just perfect. Call of Duty was at this point where it's setting so far into the future that, you know, we're not really sure what's going on with Call of Duty. It has a whole bunch of crazy advanced movement systems, and so, you know, Activision's not really paying too much attention to its fans, while EA, on the other hand, is hearing you know what, we kind of want to go back in time a little bit. We want like a World War II, World War I type era, you know, video game, first person shooter. And so EA DICE is kind of just like, all right, cool, we can do that for you. And so the Infinite Warfare trailer releases and Battlefield 1 is being created and they're like, bam, here we go. The hate for Infinite Warfare is so high, we're going to drop this trailer. So it comes out just a few days later and that sparks the entire gaming community. This completely changed the game, I think, for Battlefield, and I think this led to its success over Call of Duty this year. So if it wasn't for the Battlefield 1 trailer coming out just closely after the Infinite Warfare trailer, I'm not sure how Battlefield 1 would be received, because let's say the trailer for Battlefield 1 comes out, then the trailer for Infinite Warfare comes out. It could, could have been a completely different ball game that we're not entirely sure how it would play out. Of course, it would still be praised immensely, but we don't know if it would be praised as much as it is right now. Another thing that contributes to it is the fact that Battlefield 1, the beta came out a lot sooner and the game also dropped a little bit sooner, so people were already having more hands-on experience with Battlefield 1 over Infinite Warfare, which contributed again to even more success because if Infinite Warfare would have come out at the same time as Battlefield 1, then many people would probably be bouncing a little bit back and forth, but because people have been playing Battlefield 1 before Infinite Warfare, they've decided to stick with that game. If Infinite Warfare released before Battlefield 1, then I can guarantee you more people would be playing Infinite Warfare. But Battlefield 1, because it released earlier, led to more success, of course. So now here are kind of the differences between the two games. Battlefield has never really changed a whole lot. The only thing that's really changed about Battlefield is the time era. Back in uh, 2006, Battlefield released a futuristic Battlefield game, but it didn't have any crazy advanced movement features. It was just, you know, kind of a futuristic setting. It had futuristic guns and everything, but it did not have a crazy advanced movement system. And people actually did like this Battlefield game. Unfortunately, it didn't sell as well as many others, so they kind of just, you know, went back in time and they're like, you know what, we're just gonna, we're gonna stick with the original, we're gonna stick with the time period that we all know and love. So, I mean, they've tried a, a futuristic Battlefield game, it hasn't really worked out all too well, but they haven't continuously put out more futuristic Battlefield games. And this is an obvious sign that Call of Duty is not paying any attention whatsoever to sales or the community's reception to the game. And now talking about Call of Duty, Call of Duty has been changing quite rapidly to be honest. Many people complain that Call of Duty is the same game every single year, but to be quite frank, Call of Duty has been changing quite a bit over the recent years. Uh, the biggest change obviously is the advanced movement system that was integrated into Advanced Warfare, and then Black Ops 3 kind of perfected 
the advanced movement system, I guess you could say, and then Infinite Warfare is basically just a copy paste of uh, of Black Ops Three. But Infinite Warfare is completely, completely different from Black Ops Three, and so you know, many many people want Call of Duty to kind of go back to the old Call of Duty feeling, and you know, the movement system and the whole futuristic setting and the things that are changing Call of Duty are keeping the hardcore fans away from Call of Duty, and they want an old school Call of Duty back, which is why Modern Warfare Remastered was kind of, you know, a big success in some people's opinions because it's an older Call of Duty, it brings back a beloved game of Call of Duty, and many people want to play that. Unfortunately, they did have to slap it in with Infinite Warfare just to make that money and say, oh, Infinite Warfare sales are doing great. No, 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 no. It's Modern Warfare Remastered. That's selling great. Let's be real. All Battlefield games have been well received. There have been a few outliers, but many people do still enjoy playing those games. While Call of Duty, on the other hand, has recently been under a lot of shade, whether it be to supply drops or the futuristic setting or the new advanced movement system, Call of Duty has been a little bit hated recently. And this kind of leads into the last point, how Battlefield doesn't really change, and that's, you know, getting a lot of praise. Call of Duty is mainly an arcade shooter where it's just you, your soldier, running around on the ground or I guess on some walls now doing some parkour, but you're just shooting at other people. There's not much, much interaction going on there. Well, Battlefield has a variety of things that you can do, whether it be shooting people, you know, just you and your soldier, or flying a plane, getting in a tank, you know, or just being in a motherfucking blimp. Battlefield gives a variety of things that you can do, which adds more to the success and more enjoyment and more replayability. Because would you rather be stuck with a game where you can only shoot people, or would you rather be playing a game where you could shoot people, you know, ride on some horses, slice a motherfucker in half? I mean, the choice is fairly obvious. Battlefield has a lot more that you can do in-game, which leads to more replayability, which leads to more people, of course, playing the game. Get that. The competition between these two games is actually fairly interesting to watch. I think Call of Duty would actually be a little bit more successful and have a lot more power over the Battlefield games if they stopped releasing a new Call of Duty game every single year. If they release it similar to Battlefield every other year, then I believe that they would have much more success, they would have more time to perfect each game instead of having to rush out a new Call of Duty just for an easy, simple money grab. The market has now become increasingly oversaturated with a brand new Call of Duty every single year. Now yes, each company does have three years now to develop a Call of Duty game. However, the stress I think of coming out with a new Call of Duty game every single year leads to a little bit of a downfall between Call of Duty because if they have to innovate and if they have to change and if they have to please the community, they're obviously going to run into problems. And these problems have been what's keeping Call of Duty now behind Battlefield. While Battlefield releases every single other year, they can do pretty much whatever they want, and because of the replayability with Battlefield, people will wait the extra time for the new game because they have so many more things to do, they have so many more things to explore, and very, very few people can replay the same Call of Duty for a year. Would you rather be playing a game that has a lifespan of about two years, or would you rather play a game that dies in about six months? While there is a new Call of Duty releasing every single year, you're kind of wasting your money a little bit buying every single one every single year, because the game never really gets touched afterwards. After about six months, the game is pretty much dead when it comes to Call of Duty, and you feel like you've kind of just wasted your money, and you spend so much money on these new Call of Duty games every single year. I mean, just look at some of the big YouTubers out there. They are spending thousands of dollars on a Call of Duty game that they know they aren't going to go back and play when time passes. They know that once the new Call of Duty game comes out, they're going to have to jump ship, and all their money has been kind of just wasted on that game. While Battlefield, you have the chance to really and take your money and you don't have to really worry about anything. You don't have to worry about overspending because you know that that game is going to last a lot longer than a Call of Duty game. So needless to say, to finish up this video, I believe that Call of Duty and Battlefield are definitely two great games. They are two great competitors with each other. And I think it's really interesting to compare and contrast the two games because they are fairly similar in some senses. Now, Battlefield 1 versus Infinite Warfare, I do believe Battlefield 1 is the better game. You have your own opinion, I have mine. Battlefield definitely did beat Call of Duty this year in many people's opinions, and even in some of the company's opinions, they, they know they know what's going on. They know the Battlefield 1 is definitely the stronger between Infinite Warfare and Battlefield 1. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.